Tom, back here in Indianapolis. The Combine's back in Indy. Feels good? It does. It, it feels like back to normal again, coming back to the Combine. Not having it last year presented some challenges for us. I will say we learned a lot about how we work. That was the one positive part from the pandemic is learning how we work, what we can do better, how to be more efficient with it. We've applied some of it here at the Combine, but it's just good to be back here with everybody doing it the way we've always done it really, which is, you know, in person. You spent over a decade here, obviously, with the Colts. What's it like, though, coming back every year? It feels a little bit like coming home, even though I didn't, I didn't grow up here. But, um, you know, we were here for 15 years. Our three kids were born here, so technically they're Hoosiers. And we just had a lot of great times here. I mean, we saw our kids grow up, go to grade school here, and then obviously with the Colts, um, had a lot of winning seasons, went to two Super Bowls, and won a Super Bowl, and had a parade, you know, right down this street and around this as I've heard it called as a roundabout, but it's Monument Circle, and it is the town of roundabouts. So there's not very, very few traffic signals, it's all roundabouts. Really? So this is what I'm gonna miss if the combine ever moves from Indy, yeah. doing the monument walk with you. <laughs> What's your favorite memory of working in Indy, living here? I mean, you would think it would be the Super Bowl, which was great, but it's really just all the times of being around everybody here. And, um, you know, in this business, it's been one, be with one team for that long is kind of rare. So yeah. that was, it was wonderful. Well, let's get to your other team that you've been with now for 10 seasons, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. What does it mean to have spent that time now with the Chargers and built that family with this group now? Very similar, uh, very similar. It's, uh, cause it really is a, you know, it's, it's a workplace, but we, all, we also have families on, you know, on the outside and we have to try and tie it all together. And that's really what it's like uh, trying to build that same atmosphere um, the jobs we do are very important. Um, it means a lot to us, but it's not everything we do. We all have families off the field and um, other interests off the field, but uh, it's really trying to build the same thing, trying to build that culture, uh, which I think we have of people in the building. It doesn't matter what department you work in, whether it's football or non-football, trying to keep everybody involved. And um, you know, we're starting to see the results of that. Now that you've taken some time to digest last season, what are some positives that you took away from it? You know, it was an exciting year. I mean, from a fan standpoint, like I said before, like you can't say we're a boring football team to watch. <laughs> so, but I just think the energy that the staff has brought, obviously with that, that Brandon, has, Brandon has brought, um, you can feel that. You can feel that in the stadium. Um, you can feel that in the community much more now. I noticed that a lot this year, just more people wearing Charger gear. But you, yeah, you can feel it. I mean, you can feel the excitement. You can. We want to be a fun team to watch play. I mean, number one, you know, we have to win. We know that. We want to entertain and have fun. And I think when you watch us play, um, between our offense and our defense, I mean, it's a fun team to watch. And that, that, that's one of our goals. Well, I think the funny thing is, when we were here last, it was the Justin Herbert combine. Looking back to what he did back then to where he is now, where have you seen the most growth? You know, most of that growth is really inside the building with how they prepare. Uh, week to week for the for the game opponent and how much work that he puts into it. Um, he's in the building all the time, uh, working on film, meeting with their coaches, meeting with the quarterback group. So um, that's where you see those big gains. That's where you see the kids. You know, he's not a kid anymore, but you see them really grow up in the business. And he still has a long way to go, which is great to know. Yeah, and exciting. Yes, and yep. I think scary for some of the other teams in the league. <laughs> Tom, you mentioned Brandon Staley. What impressed you most about how he handled his first year as the head coach of this team? Probably time management. You know, for a first time head coach and all the aspects that go into the job that really have nothing to do with X's and O's. And he handled it awesome. Um, he never looked like he was ever stressed for time or I've got so much to do, not, not once. And um, that's a big part of the job. There's just so many things that go on around the head coach that if you're a coordinator, you never have to worry about. All you got to worry about is getting your side of the ball ready to play the next meeting, the next practice. The head coach is so much bigger than that. Um, but uh, as he likes to say, he likes high capacity players. He's a pretty high capacity head coach, so. Character and capacity, the two Staley-isms. Yep. Uh, this is your first combine though, really working together in person. What has that process been like? We were just talking about this, that this morning. This is our first time here together. This is last year, everything was virtual. Um, it's been actually not just Brandon, all of our coaching staff. So last night we were in some interviews uh, with Chris Beatty running the interview with the receivers. So seeing those guys interact with the players, seeing Brandon interact with the players. And the combine is 
there's just a lot of work to be done here. Some of it's separate, some of it's together. Um, so there's not really a certain cadence you have to be on. Um, but it's, it's just been great. It's just it's new energy with a new staff and watching people do things differently. Um, I, I'm real big on trying to assess what we do and not just do it the way we've always done it because that's the way it's been. Try and find some new things to attack. Even little things, how we interview players, how we're using video with the players, how we're using video ourselves to get some work done. During, there's some dead periods during the day that we have a chance to do some of our own work that we would be, normally be doing back in Los Angeles. So just trying some new different ways. And plus it kind of refreshes things, even with, with the scouts. If you, if, if you have the same process, the same system every single year, it can get real stale. Yeah. So you need some new ideas from, from people. Um, believe me, if there was one way to do this, we would all do it the exact same way if it was successful. <laughs> and everyone would win the yes, Super Bowl. Yes, and at the it's end not. The There's just different ways to attack things and different systems and procedures. So, um, always looking at that, trying to get some different ideas from Brandon, from places he's been, whether it was the Rams or whether it was the Broncos or the Bears, or even even at the college level. So, um, yeah, just trying some some different looks at things. Feel good. You don't have to do as much quarterback prep as you did the last time you were here. Honestly, we do the same quarterback prep every single year. I mean, we're, we're going to scout these quarterbacks like we don't have one. That's, okay. the way, that's the way our scouts are kind of programmed, which is the way it should be. Um, I know I sleep better at night knowing that we have one mm -hmm. that we're very happy with. So I don't have to worry about trying to figure out a way to get one. But uh, as far as actually scouting these players, you never know down the road who becomes available. So we like to have a nice file on everybody that comes out in this draft, no matter the position. And uh, you know, when our scouts are on the road in the fall and they're looking at players, they're really looking at if, if our roster was empty, we had nobody, you know, this is who we think could come in and help us. So it doesn't affect them too much, but um, yeah, you can't really cut any corners. And then Tom, after spending 15 years here, you obviously come back for the combine every year, but does it feel full circle? And in a way, what's maybe the biggest thing that you learned from your time in Indianapolis that you still draw on today? I mean, I spent 15 years there with, with Bill Pulling and Chris Pulling and really everything I learned about the NFL and roster management and building a team really came from them. So I rely on that every day. If that doesn't change, um, you know, we all have different personalities, but but that all started here, you know, working, you know, grinding out all those days. Because um, when we all arrived here, this, you know, I think the Colts were two and 14, they had the first pick of the draft. So there was a lot of work to be done. Um, but, you know, those were those, uh, those early years in the NFL where you're just learning every day still learning to this day. Um, but yeah, everything really started here. If you want to see more content like this, check out the link right here.